Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our live trading room here at Admore Markets. Glad that you could join us right at 7.45 UK time on 17th of September. We're already uh, passing the midway of this month again. Time flies. Before we take a look at the trading, the markets, the price movements, etc., of course, the risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. So thanks for your attention on that. Moving on, once again, welcome, hosted by Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, by the way, and uh, we're going to take a look at swing trading and uh, tomorrow all trading and Thursday, as you probably know, intraday trading. Now, yesterday we had an educational webinar presented by Torontola, and on Thursday we have one again at 5 p.m. Let me see what the topic was to this week. I think is trading breakouts or Fibonacci's, one of the two. We'll be looking at breakout strategies especially, and our focus will be defining the trend, looking for divergence, Fibonacci levels, and support and resistance. All right, so that we can with that information, we can establish a trend bias, look for a pullback, and uh, check any filters and see how we can trade the opportunity. Alrighty, the social media. And with that said, we're going to take a look at the Forbes calendar, then to the chart. But before we do that, I'm going to welcome the sales manager of Admiral Marcus, Michal. Hope you had a good weekend. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for this lovely introduction, Chris. I certainly did have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much for asking. I hope all of you had the same. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Mikhail Onohov, and I'm a client relationship manager at Admiral Markets. In essence, my responsibility is to make and create the best trading environment for you. Here are my contact details. If by the end of the webinar you still have some questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, here's my email, phone number, and Skype. And uh, I'll be very happy. To, I'll be very happy to help you. I think we had some problems with the screen. I hope it's working now. I'm getting information right this second. Uh, I'm really excited to speak with all of you today. All of you decided to participate in this webinar t today in the morning for one reason and one reason only. You are interested in forex trading. You you want to understand the process better and you want to be a success. You're interested, you're intrigued, you want to become a Forex trader. Some of you are just interested, some of you have experience with Forex. Some of you trade regularly and have their fair share of losing trades, and of course, losing trades when you look like this, and winning trades when you look like this. Obviously, all of us, 100% of us, want to become this guy. There's plenty of similarities between them, good watch, fancy suit, nice cushy job, but only this guy looks genuinely happy right now. I bet it is because he's tasting victory this very second, and I bet it tastes very good. So I think that all of you would like to taste it every day, every hour, and every minute of every day. This is why we're here today, to get better, to get ahead, to be just like this guy. But what do you do to get there? Forex is not a walk in the park, that's for sure. To be successful in Forex trading, you must be able to swim with the sharks, and swimming with the sharks is one hell of a job. A job that requires courage, strength, and of course, plenty of trading. So how do you train for a job like swimming with the sharks without getting eaten? Well, that's how. You get yourself in a position where you get a first-hand experience with absolutely no risk. And this type of experience has a name. The name is Admiral Markets Demo Account. Trading Forex requires a lot of practice. Just uh, look at this quite, sim uh, quite usual Forex setup. If you look at all the screens, buttons, indicators, you will think that uh, it reminds you of something. It reminds you of a uh, plain cockpit. Just look at the similarities are striking. And I'll tell you why it looks similar just right this second. Before you actually start trading on a real market, you must be familiar with the platform you're using. Admiral Demo offers you I think that we've had a little bit of uh, screen problems still. Uh, I'll try to see if we can actually fix it. Just one second, please. Otherwise, I've been advised that we are doing it in a uh, radio format. What about now? 
Okay, well, in this case, I'll just finish up with whatever I had to say, and I'll pass it on to Tarantula. So, uh, if you wanted to be a pilot of your forex career, it's very important for you to get plenty of trading, and trading will be provided to you by Admiral Martin's demo account. Just like a passenger uh, pilot is responsible for the passengers, you're now a pilot of your own forex plane, and you will be responsible for your money and your forex career. Uh, so, to get familiar with the features of the aircraft, and in this case, the features of the trading platform, you require plenty of practice, and you can get a lot of practice using Admiral Markets demo account. So once this webinar is finished, if you don't already have one, please get yourself an Admiral demo and see for yourself what it is like trading with Admiral Markets. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I apologize for the technical problems. I'll now be uh, passing the microphone back to, uh, to Ninat, who will uh, to, to Chris, who will continue with his presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, Michal. Always great to hear from Michal. And uh, don't forget the uh, the fact that there is a special bonus waiting for you if you contact Michal. So please be aware of that. Definitely worth your time to investigate what that bonus is. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, our website first of all to see the forex market, of course. And let me just check if you hear and see me sufficiently. You see everything. Great. So we have pound CPI in one hour forty, German ZEW in two hours and eight, USD core CPI later on. But tomorrow we, of course, as we all know, we have a FOMC statement. So that's always a, a big mover for the market. That will give us some guidance. What uh, what will happen in um, in the rest of the week, a month? Okay, I have some person uh, Moga asking me, uh, some people asking me if the sound is a bit low. Is that with everyone, or is the sound okay? Okay, great. Perfect. Let's move on then to, as I said, FOOC we have tomorrow, so that will be always interesting to see what kind of effect that has. This week we, of course, started with big fireworks in a way because we started with a, a, a massive gap. And, uh, of course, we have smaller gaps once in a while. I'm not really a gap trader. I, I hardly look at it, but this one you really can't miss because it's so big that even if you're not looking for it, you will see it, that's for sure, because um, it was a pretty big gap, uh, varying from 60, 50 to up to maybe even 100 pips, I believe. And almost all currencies, as far as I know of, had it. Majors, crosses, yens, everything. Um, pretty, pretty substantial. And uh, the euro, more or less, very close to f finishing that gap, depending where you measure where the gap is. Uh, I mean, we closed a bit lower, of course, obviously at 133. We still didn't, we still didn't reach that level, but we are bouncing off the very, very top of the green, the green zones I have here, the two green lines, and basically, if you look on a four-hour chart, that's more or less a, uh, a supply and demand zone where uh, the currency uh, moved up from, and or more or less gapped up. Right, so we're bouncing off the top of that region. So we can look at it from a lot of perspectives. So let's start from that. Let's start all the way from the week chart quickly and take a look what happened last week. Now obviously we can draw a lot of trend lines in the tops and bottoms. I don't think at the moment they're that interesting because we're still stuck in this smaller range, but obviously you have a bigger and a uh, bigger range around it as well. We talked about it. Last week was a pretty bullish weekly candle. And to me, we're heading back to resistance. If you look at the day chart, you can see even here a five wave as well. And we're moving back to resistance. So I'm not saying that I wouldn't be a buyer, but only if we break above the top here at 134.50. That's another 100 pips to go if that were to happen. And uh, if we break above sustainably, hook back, for example, then 
we can, I would take the euro dollar long and uh, probably target higher areas around 157 would be the first resistance, maybe even 140 if we were to break that. Right? Now, if we don't do that, all these fibs are high likely candidates for resistance. And the chances that we'll bounce off those levels, even if it's just a bit, is very high. If we then zoom into the four hour chart, you can see every one of these fibs except the 382 got respected. Even the 786 yesterday. So if we do move up, the 886 is a likely candidate to be respected as well, as you can imagine. Plus there's a trend line, this purple line. So that is a, a very low risk trade. If you if you take the 886 and put the stop loss above the top, and there's a lot of potential to the downside because if you move back to the day chart, you can see there is the potential to fall all the way back towards the bottom of that triangle indicated by the purple lines. And if we move to the weak chart, you'll see what kind of range that is we're talking about. So it's basically this risk and this reward at the moment from a weekly perspective or daily perspective. So that in itself is a swing trade right there. All right, so uh, I would punch in the numbers right now. If you, if we can, I'll do it later, so I don't bore you with the the details. It's not going to happen right now. We're not going to touch that 86 within the next hour. So I'll do that at the end, not to uh, waste too much time on entry orders. But that's something that I'm thinking of right there. Okay, so that's the first swing trade idea from the 886 down to uh, the bottom of the range. Now, even if this were not to move down and we only get something like this, you know, then we all trail stop it. We'll talk about the trade management a bit later, uh, if, you know, depending on how much interest there is in this idea. But obviously, uh, not going to keep the trade on forever without moving it, without protecting some profit or at least the risk of the uh, trade. Because if it does respect it, right, there's always the chance of finding support at this bottom and then maybe moving up. Now we don't want to risk these pips right up here if we're already up three to one, right? That doesn't make sense, for example. All right, so when approaching, for example, we could put a fib on from the bottom to the 886 and anywhere where we reach, for example, the 50 or the 618, anywhere in this area, we can move it to break even. Preferably, though, we would want to have a four-hour fractal above here so that we can move the stop loss to above that because it's better to use technical stop losses as a protection for that trade than um, just moving it at a random spot. Even though the 50, 618 are good spots, we could still get a pretty deep hook back and a move down. So it would be pity to move it too early because then we could stop out and still see the trade develop. So that's why using these fractals is good because then we know that you know the hook back, the pullback has already materialized, has already uh, happened, and we can move the stop loss to break even or whatever plus pips it would be with a safe kind of reassured feeling that any pullback or any move against us is not a pullback but actually a continuation to the upside. Hope that makes sense. So that's the idea here. Um, we might not get to the 86. You never know. But we have to realize that this is a pretty firm uptrend channel. And a gap like this, I don't know, I would think that looking at this, the 86 is more likely at the moment than the 786 as a reversal fib. So looking at uh, that, because if we look at the you know the, the momentum it still has, one more move probably here to get some divergence and then fall, even if it's a bit, I think is more likely than this, the currency using the 786 as a as a uh, turning spot. But the 786 could be the turning spot, and if it is, then, and I don't get filled in at the 886 for downside, then I would wait for the break of this channel that we have here in the four-hour chart, or I have, 
and um, want to break that channel, hook back, and continuation, and that would be the second method of entry, or the scaling if we're already in 886. So that's the first idea. That would be the second idea for downside. And only longs up in here, but that's way far from now. We might be able to take a long up to the 886, in fact, because we are in an uptrend channel, so we can take a look at that idea, although that's, you know, it's a bit smaller swing trade. What we're looking at right now are bigger swing trades, from here, from here, and from here. So anything between here and the 886 is kind of a smaller intraday trade, not really a swing trade, but we could quickly look at that. This is the uh, basically the four-hour channel. Let me take a look. I have two channels on here, in fact. Let me zoom out here. All right, that's it. You can see. Uh, this blue channel, let me make the color a bit different. One second, I didn't realize that when I was doing my charts this morning. That's better. The dark blue is a, is a wider channel, potentially. Uh, a lot of price action was at the top of that channel. We have some price action at the bottom of that channel. As you can see, looking at the dark blue once again, the middle line right in here was touched. And uh, within that, dark blue channel, within the day channel, we have this channel that's moving nicely as well. All right, so obviously we had the upside momentum, but we're running into resistance. That's just, to make a sh long story short, that's basically what it boils, into, boils down to. And uh, anything of here is still support because of the channel, because of the gap, moving averages, tops, everything in there is still support, that's why we bounced off a few hours ago, bounced off that level. So anything here is still bullish, anything in here obviously resistance. So those are the bull and bear lines and uh, that's why I was looking for shorts there, shorts here and obviously longs above. Okay, let's take a look at the 50-minute chart. So let me move to my other charts more of an intraday analysis quickly. Anyhow, I, I asked last week what most of you found interesting and to be honest, there was really no uh, like no preference. I mean everyone had a certain preference but there was no group preference. Everyone some of you liked interest, some of the other liked swings. There was really no unanimous preference. So let me just quickly take a look at the intraday uh, euro dollar and see what the pivot point says, for example, the Camarilla indicator pivot point, if you don't mind, and quite a small zone right above here. Pretty fast move up, pretty fast open so far. Was there some news? 30 pips in two hours. That is quite fast for a opening. The H4 is about 10 pips away. So let's see if we get a respect there and a small bull flag like that. There could be that continuation trade upon the break up to the H5 or 886 maybe. Something we can keep an eye on. But that's obviously, you can see, just smaller space and less reward to risk. A bit more risky as well because the 786 could be the turning spot and any up move here could still bump into some resistance because of that. So I find it a bit more risky, but it wouldn't say, of course, doesn't mean that it wouldn't work. Obviously, you can see the angle of the band here pretty good, 
45 degree angle, which means four hour chart is in an uptrend, obviously. And we're getting a breakout candle here. Look at the pullback, obviously, in red, back to the gray band. And a bounce off the gray band, we get green candles indicating momentum to the upside right about here at 133, 35. It's already 20 pips away from there. That's the 15 minute chart. You see that? Here, the uh, momentum indicating that breakout away from the gray band. Let me zoom in so you can see that. But that was uh, two hours ago. But if something like that happens, that is an interesting uh, way to detect detect a breakout. Let's take a look at this euro dollar back in green on the one hour chart as well. So everything is green, in fact, if you look at all the charts. The green here, candles, four hour green candles, and day chart candles are green. So, you know, maybe that fib of mine, maybe the five waves is part of a correction. Maybe it's part of a an ABC. That's always tricky with Elliott waves, as we know. So we should, you know, also be aware of the fact that uh, it could possibly break up uh, to the upside. But the thing is that even though it could break up to the upside, it can go very choppy like this. And why is that so? Because we're right at a resistance. So that resistance is going to command respect, even if it is going to break, and it's going to pull up and down, up and down, up and down. Because if you look at the fib here, you can see something like this. 236, respect. 50, respect. 618, respect. 786, respect. 886, respect. Top, respect, and then maybe it breaks. doesn't have to respect all the fibs, but so far it has except one. Anything else? Let's see. Take a look at the five minute world. We have everything green here, as you can see on these MACDs. Bit oversold on the five minute, logically. That's about it, I guess. Any questions? From your side? Yeah, there's not, not, in my opinion, not really much to say except, except that, really. Adrian is saying that, that he wouldn't trade it to the upside. That makes sense to me. Normally, I wouldn't either, by the way. But, you know, if there's anything of a, of a, of a intraday trade, and I would say it's from H4 to H5 or to 886. You know, if I had to choose, let me say it this way. <laughs> Let's see. Can can I explain how to apply the indicator like your dollar daily below? Uh, you mean this one? Yeah, that, that, that. This is a special indicator. This is not something you will find, unfortunately, as a standard tool. Um, but that's something that that is a special indicator. That's not belong. Doesn't belong to his, you know, a package or something like that. But let me uh, let me write you my email, and I can give you more info on that. One second. Regarding the 886 fib, by the way, um, what I'll probably be looking for is to trust up the four-hour fractals like this. So if we get a four-hour fractal at the 886, then uh, I would move the stop loss right above that. All right, 
which is probably just a few pips risk. And if it then breaks below this band and hooks back to the band and then moves down and uses the band of resist resistance, then we can u easily move that stop loss to above the next fractal. Okay, does that make sense? So first fractal at the 86, move it above there. When we have the fractal at 886, then if it breaks through the band, hooks back to the band, uses the band of resistance, and then moves down, that fractal is safe to use as a stop loss trail stop. Because then the band will act as resistance. It has turned around. Price has moved away from it. And any time it would hook back to the band, it should act as resistance. And the band will act as resistance, and our stop loss will be safe behind it, in fact. And we can trail stop any fractal that is just sticking out or at the top of that band and use that as a trading stop. Because if it breaks above that band, then something else is going on. And that's when we actually want to, where we want to trail stop it. Where we, that is actually the optimal point where you want to exit this swing trade. And hopefully it will uh, be so impulsive that we get all the way to 128.50, which is the take profit, and get a nice 550 pip trade versus a uh, 50 reward. So that would be like, it's close, to, it's just about a 10 to 1, maybe even 11 to 1. The band is a, that is, that's something you can easily put on your chart is three EMAs of 34 EMA. All of them are of 34 EMA. One is close, one is high, one is low, though. Close, high, and low. And then you get this, uh, what I call the band. All right, good. Well, that's the, that's the idea. Let's move on to something else. So I could look at the pound, okay? Pound, same story, had a gap of 60 pips or so, 55 maybe. And uh, it too has a small H4, H5 pivot point. Pivot, this is the Camarilla pivot point indicator. It too has basic, basically quite a tight H4, H5 because yesterday was a slow day. L L4, sorry, yeah, L4 to L5 is lower, of course, at 158.60 below the gap. And we have an L3 right at the gap, which, if anything today, that could make sense if you know, we bounced. We missed it just by a few pips there. But that would have made sense, the gap and L3 confluence for upside. Anyhow, that's passed. Let's take a look at the 15-minute chart. The pound looks a bit better set up for more upside because it still has space to the 786. So that could be better than the euro when it approaches this H4, which is at 159.36. So let's keep an eye on that. Let me move to other charts. Let me start with this. This is the pound. Let me start quickly with uh, with this fib. You obviously see that the 786 is right at 160. So it can move out. It can move up there to take that fib out. If we look at last week, that was a huge bullish candle, and with that momentum in our back, it could easily push up to 160. All right, so I'm a bit more, um, because the euro already hit the 786, it's a bit different with the pound, which didn't hit that big fib yet. All right, so 
if we look at that upside, because basically what we're doing is we had the down move here and it's gone sideways or corrected ever since, we're now going to focus on this upside, basically. All right? Where could that end? It could also be the 886, just like the euro, and the top of that triangle, the same as the, the euro. The euro also has a triangle top and the 886 confluence, the pound 2, but the pound still has space even to the 786. Just in case you're wondering, you know, why put those fibs on? I mean, you might be wondering, is it useful? Does it make sense? Does, you know, do traders use that in fact, just in case that you're not used to fibs? And the answer is yes. The fibs are highly used by a ton of traders, and they're putting the same fib on as we have now. Because, why? Because if you would zoom into the day chart, well, let me, I have to add the fib on the day chart. The 236 got respected, the 382 got respected, the 50 got respected, the 618 got respected. So if you had any doubts, then I, I think it's taken away here because these FIBs do get respected. The market sees these levels, so therefore the chance that 786 gets respected is also very high. It's never a guarantee, of course, but the chances are high, and if anything, we should always plan, plan on it. We should plan that it gets respected, even if it were not to get respected uh, once in a while, then we should plan on it because the chances are so high. So, just in case that you know you're new to FIBS, by the way, if you are new to Add More Markets, we have. If you go to AddMoreMarkets.com and you go to Education, and you go to Webinars, and you go to Video Archive, you see the last ten months or so of or nine months of yeah educational webinars. If you go through all of them then you definitely have a good solid base or foundation for trading. And uh, then it's just a question of screening time, as Tarantula always says, or Nenet, and uh, you know, his name is Nenet here. Then um, you really have a very, very strong foundation. It's just a matter of screening time as well, of course. By the way, if you want to sign up for tomorrow or Thursday sessions, you can do that as well here, okay? You can see live intraday trading. And uh, on oh, Thursday, we're going to talk about divergence. Anyhow, moving back. So the FIB webinar, that's what I wanted to say, you can find in that archive, okay? So within that up move, you can see we have this blue trend channel, the dark blue one, and a light blue one indicating the most recent up move. And if we look at the FIB targets now, we can see that the first move went to the 50 FIB. You're going to have to look at my screen to see that now went to the 272 target and eventually to the 618 from the 50 FIB. Then if we FIB the next move, I'll do that in blue, we went, again, we went to the 382 and are on our way to the 618 target as we speak. All right, so that 618 target is, and the minus 1,000 target is at 160.50, but we know we have a 786 at 160. These green lines are key support levels, you know, at the moment. If, if price were to go there, I would really expect support because not only are those horizontal levels, this is the supply-demand zone right in here where I have the green box. That's a top, but it's also the bottom of a trend channel. Will we get there? Maybe not because if you then zoom into the one-hour chart, we can see even a steeper channel within the dark blue channel, and we can easily continue up to 160 without even getting that deep. Let's move on to the 15, and you can see that we had actually the moving averages very close to each other, and our price is now moving away from there. 
And now I'm going to put a horizontal line for the L4. So I know that if we get close to L4, that we should look at our camera pivot point indicator. By the way, for those of you who wonder where you can find that pivot point indicator, uh, it's something that should be able to, to find and download for free if you Google it, OK? But if you want, you can also send me an email, and I'll help you with that. So the email is there above, OK? All right, so that's the line we're looking at for the H4. That would be a breakout trade, which as a, like an intraday swing would make sense, or, or, or yeah, intraday trade. From a swing trade perspective, by the way, uh, the only swing trade I see in here is from the 786 and the 886. To the downside. A break of that blue channel to the downside. It's the same like the euro, or a break above. Exactly the same picture, okay, with that, with that, in that regard. So let's move on maybe to something else, because it's, it's really quite identical. Uh, let's see. I wanted to show you. I prepared this Ichimoku. I thought it could be interesting to look at it. Something different, I thought, for defining the trend on the euro, if there was any trend. But interesting enough, Let's start with the weak chart. You can see that price broke through that Ichimoku, and now is using it multiple times as support, in fact. And uh, the the Tenkin the the Tenkin line, the Tenkin Sen, which is a bit more shorter term line, reacted to last week's up move, and you can see it pointed pretty fast to the upside here. That's the red line. It's very difficult to see. Let me zoom in. Not sure if anyone finds this interesting, but I thought I'll give you a bit different perspective of of a, something you know something of a new indicator maybe for you. Maybe not. If you use it more often, let me know, and uh, be quite interested who uses that or not. Is there anyone here that uses that? I like the moving averages because the chart is less cluttered. So it's um, if I look at the band, those three moving averages, to me it looks neater and easier for me to observe the chart. That's why I'm not regularly using this, especially if I show you charts, because it, uh, I think it could be a bit complex to look at. But you can see the, what is this called, the, um, I forgot the name here, the Chiku span, I think it's called. Let me take a look. Yeah, the Chiku span, indeed. Broke above the Kumu as well. So to me, you know, from a technical point of view, I think it's at resistance. But if you look at this cloud, that maybe, maybe we'll break above and in the, in the down move was just part of a correction. But once again, it really doesn't matter unless we break above the top, right? The month chart here, we can see, has a resistance higher. So if we do break above, that could be a resistance spot around 140, as we can see. quite choppy though we had a very thin kumu but it was enough to to bow, to act as support this looks very messy because we're on a range so there are a lot of lines intertwined with each other here but the kumu is pretty thick at the moment if you compare it to uh, previous uh, spots also on the day chart we did bounce off The Tenkin is still above this uh, blue line. I forgot the name of the blue one. One second. Ah, the key, uh, 
Kiyun, sorry. Tenkin is still above the Kiyun. Indicating still that momentum to the upside. So if that were to, let's see, if price were to, it was a, it was a while ago I used Ichimoku strategy, so I have to, I should have maybe prepared that. I didn't think about strategies. I was just looking at support and resistance uh, before our, you know, when preparing our charts, my charts, and uh, also preparing this for you to look at. I should have looked at the strategies. I didn't use them for a while. I forgot about them, but I had a strategy on the Ichibuku that said that the swing strategy, if, uh, let me think how it went. Otherwise, I'll prepare that for tomorrow because, you know, it doesn't make sense to to dig deep and give you half information. Okay. I know, I'm not sure if there's anyone interested in that, so if you are, let me know. I'm just using it as support and resistance to see, you know, if there is such a support or resistance close by. Alrighty. Interesting stuff though. You can see here the tank can cross the Kiyun. So let's see if we can recross that for that upside still to the 886 or the top. Who knows? Let's move on. This is the Euro Pound one hour chart. Uh, by the way, indeed, uh, Saudi and well, it's not really you. Yeah, it depends on what kind of strategies you use. Basically, you can use Ichimoku for all time levels. You can even use the 15 minute world. It's just like moving averages. You can use them all or any indicator. You can really use it on all time frames and all types of tradings. <clears throat> but just like moving averages, the disadvantage, no, not the disadvantage, the, the thing is that. With moving averages, you only have one side. You either have a support or resistance. The same is Ichimoku. Trend channels, you do have two sides. You can use channels as support and resistance because price is bouncing off there. And moving averages only have one side of the story. So what you have to do with moving averages and Ichimoku is move is use multiple time frame analysis because if you have support on one time frame, you don't know where the resistance lies, which means you have to go to one high time fr high one time frame higher to see where the resistance would be on that time frame. While trend channels have tops and bottoms in the tool itself. That's that's otherwise you can use it on all time frames. <clears throat> Alrighty. And an indicator like that I don't have rich, unfortunately. Seems interesting, but let's see. Euro pound one hour chart. You can see we had a many triangles. Now, I myself am quite a structure trader, so what I look at is often is chart patterns for trading, and uh, less and less fibs. But in case of the euro pound, when they or reach such important fibs, they do definitely get interesting. So I'm willing to trade those now. But more often, I'm more of a breakout uh, trader of chart patterns like these. So we had two triangles in a row. And still breaking. We have maybe a new triangle right in here on the euro pound. The four hour world, we broke a major support. So there could be an area here that the euro pound is set up for some uh, shorts. But I'm not a big fan of the euro pound, but we are breaking some support. Who knows? Let's move on. I'm really not want to trade this anyhow. If you are, let me know. I'll dive into it a bit more. But pound Swissy is something I saw maybe potential trade though. And that was kind of this orange zone that I circle I drew here. That's my way of showing you that I'm interested in that downside. We're right at the top. 
So it's more or less a bounce trade, a bounce off the top, okay? A trade back basically to the broken trend line and this top. So it's a it's a reversal bounce trade, and most likely when we reach there we'll find support for continuation or at least some bounce, right? You gotta remember that in fact the easiest way of trading is using chart patterns in my opinion because it um, it does make the currency just looking at the structure of the market what is the impulse what is the correction how do those fit is there a channel you know trading using these structures or structure trading is really my preferred method it uh, it makes it easy you don't really have too much things to look at or put on your chart or update you don't have tons of indicators on um, you know it's it might require a bit of time and experience to for you to for anyone basically to gain a, a feeling for it but that's really with everything so and once you see the structure basically what you can look for is you know breaks bounces pullback continuations as we've been talking about confirmation trades early entry trades breakout trades with the trend counter trend ranges you know you can mix those all those elements and look at currency and say okay I'm taking this to set up basically what this is is just a uh, a reversal confirmation uh, first of all, it's a reversal. Second of all, we're waiting for a confirmation, and um, it's a bounce. Right? Bounce, reversal, confirmation. And you can basically use those three levels, right? Reversal, bounce, confirmation trade. Right, while a breakout with the trend would look like that, or three arrows, right? With the trend, breakout, expecting impulse. So you can really dissect every setup like this. That's what I mean with structure trading. And in fact, everyone does it, although, although you might need, you, you know, you know. You might not even be aware of it. Even if you're trading candlesticks, that is in confirmation, right? So it really is kind of dissecting the market in a way. And I do that very consciously, but in fact, if you think about it, everyone does it. It's just that not everyone is really aware of that or does it so methodolic, you know, precise or methodolic. Methodological. <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so moving on to this trade. Basically, a break of the moving averages here, the band, down to the long term moving average on the four hour chart. That's the idea. Got a long-term moving average right here. So we, if we break that, if we break the the channel we have on the black uh, the black lines on the one-hour chart, that would be the zone I want to trade it in. But then it depends, of course, how you want to actually trade the confirmation, because within the bounce confirmation reversal trade, then you have the next step is how you enter, right? How do you enter that zone? Where exactly? So the first way to do it is the breakout. The second would be to wait for the pull, breakout and pullback, or trade the break, pullback, and wait for the confirmation.
a breakout would be, for example, if you're looking at the one hour chart here, would be to wait for a push, a close, an hour close below the moving average, the long term moving average, and below this trend line. Uh, the lower one is uh, this is like it's 144 or 150 if you want to make it easy for yourself. It really doesn't matter. It's about the same anyhow. That's also an EMA close. And the reason I use that is because it's it gives a good indication, and it's a very very useful level, and something I highly recommend if you use moving averages because just go back and time and look how price responds to that level. And you'll see that often enough price respects that level and if it does cross over it, uh, it is actually a reversal spot. Something like here for example. It pauses at there at that level but then decides to break through and that's was the moment that the pounce was see continued with an upside. or here. We used it as support, we broke through it, used it as resistance, moved away from it again. Now is it you know always precise? No it is. No it is not. Nothing is 100%. Yes, exactly. I love moving, I love FIB numbers, and FIB sequence numbers, and in fact um, the whole market can be dissect, dissected or broken down into FIB sequence numbers because even the number of pips that a currency moves is often very close to a FIB sequence number. Now this too is not like 100% guarantee but it often enough is quite close to it. Tarantula, for example, also uses um, 89 for the pound. Also, if you realize, a FIB sequence number, in fact. All right. Now, certainly you would have choppiness as well, like in this. And you have to realize that when this happens, the moving averages are less important, although actually the long-term moving average is kind of like the level halfway that range, most of the often or not. And when that happens, you just have to realize that this is a consolidation period and just zoom out one time frame higher and read and interpret that time frame to understand what this box means. All right? <clears throat> Anyhow, back to the trade. Um, let me take a look at, let me put this quickly on the 50 minute chart as well. Yeah, so the price is pretty close to that uptrend channel. So I don't think, I think a break could be possible as well to look for one hour close below that. In fact, the question is if, if we don't want, you know, consider a close below this level because that could already be the correction right there. You know, that could already be, in fact, the trigger. If we close below this green band between 147.35 and 147.30, that could already be the trigger that we are going to move down at least to to here approximately. Not sure about this, this bottom trend line. It's Another way is to wait for the break of the four-hour band 
because that could be important as well. And if you look at the four hour band, you know that's that support is just a bit lower at one forty seven so a break and close below one forty seven would indicate a four hour reversal back to the to this one fifty five so a, a wait waiting for that might make sense too actually probably would be more safer in fact so I'll put the green line there. Alrighty. Let's keep an eye on that on that trade and um, that idea. So basically, I'll wait for a four-hour close below that 147 and put the stop loss probably above the four-hour factor wherever it is here measure that risk and see if that's sufficient to the next target which is at around the, the, this moving average or the trend line. That's the target. Dollar Swissy, I'm still waiting for a break to the upside here, break to the top of this range just like the Euro in fact and we bounce off to 786. So it's the same story as the Euro, I'm not going to dive into that that much. A potential long off date 86 or a break of this bull flag, in my opinion, would be a good swing trade. EuroCAD, well, basically, EuroCAD is at the 382 fib that I have on here, and we have the potential to move up to the minus 618 all the way here. Let's see. Could be. So let's see how that pans out. We are at the middle line right now. Um, but no particular trade that I, I see right here, to be honest. There's, there's nothing that I would like to trade. I wouldn't want to trade it to the downside because we're in an uptrend channel, although we broke out of this purple line. I only see a trade off the bottom here, off the 50 or 618, or if we pull up, make a triangle like this, and then break. So I'm going to quickly move on. Don't want to waste your time on this EuroCAD. Dollar yen is something I am yen's pair I am actually am interested in right now, and that's because of this four-hour channel and this one-hour correction. Let me show you the four-hour chart. First of all, we broke out of this daily triangle or weekly triangle. Those are the black lines on the chart. We broke out of that. Sorry, this, we broke out of it here pull back, bounced, but had kind of a failed continuation. That could be a, it could be a bear flag rich on the Eurocat. It could be. But um, or it is a bear flag, but it also because it's an uptrend there's also a statistical probability that is quite decent that this would just keep on moving like that because it's an uptrend. When you have bear flags in an uptrend, they're less reliable statistically. All right. Uh, let's see. Same for bull flags in uh, downtrends. So what I, I'm really interested in is dollar yen because we did have a break pullback continuation, but the continuation hardly went anywhere where we got a deeper pullback, but still I think it's right back at the trend at the support breakout level, more or less a double bottom as well, plus if you draw a trend channel, we got a nice trend channel with four hits, good angle, and uh, we just bounce off that bottom. So I like that trend, I like the trend channel. And if we break that purple line we have on that chart, let me zoom in, there's a high probability that we're actually in, going to have a breakout trade to the upside here.
there is a potential head and shoulders pattern indeed. Or either we had it here, which I don't think really fits within um, within time factor because you can see that this right shoulder is uh, disformed compared to this shoulder, right? This would be a weird looking person if that was his right shoulder. So either we still get the shoulder, which would make, you know, that would make more harmony still. So that level is definitely still a resistance level. But you can see there's plenty of space to that. And uh, if we follow the technicals, you can see the uptrend channel and a break like that, the statistical probability of a trend continuation is very high. And this is something you can easily check in the past. Go put trend channels on and single line trend lines. And um, you'll see that often enough it, uh, it pans out and you have great trades. So that's something that definitely occurs because trading like that is if you use trend channels and trend lines, moving averages and chart patterns and structures, fibs, that, you know, in my opinion, it, it's, it's the way to trade, I think, uh, the most common way, and most, I mean, most common for, um, how do you call it, traders that, discretionary traders, that's the word I was looking for, discretionary traders, right, not if you're looking for some specific algorithm or something like that, of course, or if you're scalping the market, right? Nothing wrong with scalping as long as you scalp with a purpose. I mean, if you enter a swing trade and you're targeting 200 pips and you're exiting the trade after two pips within 30 minutes and you call it scalping, well, then, of course, it's not scalping. Then you were actually just too scared to take the swing trade or someone, not necessarily you, but someone just failed to execute their trading plan. All right? So... That's something that uh, we need to avoid. Anyhow, I'm drifting here. Um, so that would be a good momentum breakout with the trend. Does everyone see that? First of all, the trend is up. First of all, we broke, well, first of all, we broke monthly, weekly, daily resistance with that triangle. Then we're building, we have this uptrend channel. So we're in uptrend. We have a pullback. And if we break the purple line, we're breaking the pullback into the same direction of the trend, and it would be a breakout. So uptrend, momentum, breakout. So these are one of the best combinations when you have everything aligned like this. They happen less regularly, but they are if they do occur, they're very strong. And as Adrian says the, the next resistance level we have to be aware of is somewhere in here and here, right? But that's luckily still decent far away for us to take a trade uh, up to that level, for example. So if we zoom in out to the one hour chart, we'll look at this bull flag. And I'm waiting for a break of the pull flag. Now, here too, although we have three green arrows in our matrix, here too you don't have to necessarily, the entry, of course, is dependent on do we take the break, can you do we take the pullback, or the continuation. And in trades like these, sometimes I take all three, or I split the risk of, of, you know, among all three entries. You don't have to do that. You can wait for the continuation or one of the others. But I think a breakout here makes sense, personally. Um, let me put the bull flag on the 50-minute world as well. And I'm going to, because this is probably going to happen pretty soon, I will do that right now, in fact, if you don't mind. Um,
the spread here is oh, less than a pip, 0 0.7. So if you're wondering how that's possible, it is with Admiral Markets and uh, test it, open a demo, or open a small account if you want with just a nominal amount that you want to test and see for your own eyes, you know, the spreads plus the execution and I'm sure you'll be very satisfied and um, it's definitely worth it and we have, you know, Michal, sales manager there or from Admiral Markets has a special offer for you as well. So if you're interested in that, ask Michal, he has a Skype address and email address ready for you. So. Anyhow, at the moment I'm going to put the stop loss below the 50 minute fractal. I go a few pips above go to 99.37 and I'll target the next resistance. Let's take a look at the one hour world. So we said that if it is a head and shoulders, it could go all the way up to 1023. That is a 786 as well. Do you see that? Because if we put the one hour world, let's let's let me explain this. We have that uptrend channel. We have that trend line that if it breaks we have that uptrend or the upside potential. If we do we could put a fib on this downside because we did have a correction right? we had a downside correction within that trend channel we had a three wave down from the all the way from the top to the bottom of that channel if you look at the 618 fib was respected and where did it go to <clears throat> to the minus 272 alright so even with corrections especially zigzag corrections fib levels work terrifically and amazingly in fact and what will be the next resistance level the 786 right which is equal to that head and shoulders potential head and shoulders pattern So that is a nice harmony. And the reason why I left this fib on here, all right, and for those of you who are still here, you're going to get a big bonus today, in my opinion. Are you ready for the bonus? Anyone who isn't already paying attention, I think it's worth paying attention because that is that information will be, and if you know it, that's great, because we did talk about it before, but uh, there are many, many, many traders that pay top dollar for that information, so if you are at the minus 272 target, first of all, the targets themselves are worth gold, but I paid a lot for them, but anyhow, <laughs> um, if you are at the 272 target, there's always the likelihood of a deeper retracement of the same fib. And maybe you recognize the pattern. Now, I'm not too good in these patterns, to be honest, but I think this is called, I always get them mixed up because they're all these animals. They're called crab and bat. and I, because, of the, because they're all animals, I always get them mixed up. Does anyone know this one? <laughs> Help me out. I always get mixed up. But this is one of those. I think it's the bat or rat or no one here. What is the bonus someone is asking? Uh I, I don't know. Um and that you would have to ask uh Michal about that. Well, let me look it up otherwise quickly. So, 
So unfortunately, I don't know what the bonus is, but uh, Michal didn't disclose it here. That's he wants you to 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 reach out to him personally. All right, but he'll he'll drop his email address and and um, and uh, Skype address tomorrow. Today he couldn't show it because his visuals were not working. But anyhow, regardless of the pattern. The more important thing is, is that if you're at a 272 target, most people then start to fib the next swing high, swing low. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is the danger that the currency will move to the next fib from the same fib, take out your stop loss because you'll be putting your stop loss here, and then do exactly what you expected. So one more time, because I want you know want to make sure that everyone's on board here. If you fib this and you're at the 272 target and then you start fibbing the next fib from here to here, some cases that works okay. In other cases, the currency could retrace to the next fib of the original blue fib, take out that stop loss and then still do the what you expected. So that's why fibbing from fib retracement to the 272 target is riskier. And you should always be aware that there is the potential to go to a higher fib. Unless, unless the 786 or 886 fibs were used. Because those are already deep fibs. Obviously, if you retrace that deep, the likelihood of retracing higher is small because there is no place to go to retrace higher. So this is specifically intended for lower FIBs, the 236 to 618. If you, for example, haven't moved down up to the 236, then go to 272 target, there is the chance to go to 382 or the 50 FIB before we move down again. You recognize this pattern? The pound has it a lot. That's why you see pound breaking a lot of bottoms, a lot of tops. All right. Now, not all of you might understand still the value of this this information because you haven't used it and tested it, and I understand that because it's you don't have any experience to relate to this information. So you might wonder, okay, cool, but but it is it is very definitely worth your time. I think, depending of course what type of trader you are. Um, all right. So something that maybe later on in your trading career you might wonder, hey. I heard about something like that. What was that again? All right. Anyhow, so this has the potential to go to the 786. That's what I'll be targeting. And I'll go uh, 10 pips below that. So that's the idea. Back to the 15 minute world. So 75 pip reward. And uh, 34 risk. So just just like a two and a two point two to one, I guess. Yeah, let's move on to the euro yen, indeed. I'm already in this trade, actually. Because I took a breakout, you know I love breakout trades, right? So you probably already knew that I was in this trade, um, but I was in it from yesterday already upon the first breakout. So obviously this is the one-hour char chart. Obviously we had an impulse here. Obviously we had a correction, which built a triangle. So that's great with chart pattern trading or structure trading. Yes, it does take time to develop because you need to build a triangle. And building a triangle, on, even on a one hour chart, started the 11th of September and the break, the first break was yesterday, five days. 
So yes, yeah, sometimes it does take a long. So, so if you would only trade one currency and only trade chart patterns, it could take a bit long. But um, so let me tell you what I traded there. Basically, I traded the. this break right in here. The break has gone slow but it is pushing up as we speak and yeah unfortunately we started with the majors but an hour ago we actually broke. I should have kept an eye on this. I had this bull flag ready here as you can see. I prepared it before our session here for this 5 minute, 15 minute world because I was thinking if this small bull flag breaks we can get a continuation. It's a pity I didn't keep an eye on this, but this is more of a swing trade session as well than, uh, than you know, this would have been more of an intraday trade because this is a five minute bull flag. But anyhow, um, the break was here and doing pretty well. Would have been a 12 pip stop loss. Anyhow. Let's see if there's anything not to trade right now. We had a break pullback. This is more or less the continuation as we speak. So we had the break already, we had the pullback, and we had the continuation. So if anything, it's probably maybe a hook back to this level. Could be a bouncing area. Now I'm really diving into small time frames here, but maybe the 618 right in here. Yeah, if you're in that trade, the next resistance well, in my opinion, let me take a look at this. Let me get one second. Let me get rid of this fib here. This is looking like a break above the four hour band, which is good. If we do that, there's plenty of space to the upside. And really, the next resistance is just the top at 133.35. Could there be some smaller, you know, resistances in between there? Surely there, there surely could. For example, maybe this this zone is a supply and demand zone. So we could always be a bit more cautious and say, okay, the bottom of that supply and demand zone, the bottom of those forces around here, that would be more of a conservative target. Personally, I consider this a swing trade. Let me see what I'm targeting. Yeah, I have 132.83.6. 132.84 is my target. So that's just two pips below the two pips below this lowest red band. So as you can see, I've I've just I have a how do you call it a there's about a two to one trade, but it's a quite conservative target, as as you can see, because I'm going for a few pips below what I would consider the earliest resistance. But there is a lot of space, and I think the likelihood of going to 133 or 133.20 is relatively high as well. But I just have a rule that if I take a breakout trade like that, that I'm content with two to one or just a bit more than two to one. 
So that's also one of the reasons. Although, the, from a discretionary point of view, I know that it, there's probably more space on this. Um, I'm often enough just happy with the two to one, and it's easier from a psychological point of view for me to hang into two to one than try to hang into more and then see those pips disappear. Um, so from my trading psychology, it's easier. F it's the optimal for me to hang into two to one, kind of. But then if I would hang into more and I I miss the target, then you know it's kind of annoying to have so much profit and then see it disappear. So that's why I'm often enough content with two to one. If anything, sometimes I I do multiple positions, take part of it at two to one, and maybe leave one part on that either trail stops and goes for higher take profits. You know, that's another way of doing it, like two-thirds and trail stopping it and going for three to one on the rest is for the rest of the third, for example, or half-half, depends on you, is another way of doing it. Sometimes I do that as well. So yeah, from a swing trade perspective, unfortunately that trade materialized yesterday. So I, I only an intraday trade maybe if we hook back from here and continue. All right, pound yen more or less the same, but that just broke out really recently. In fact, It could be the same idea, in fact, to take an entry back at the at the kind of like the confirmation level or the breakout level, I should say, or the retest level. So an entry at that retest level could be a good one because a potential bounce at that level is is always a good statistic, a good a decent probability, a reliable place for the currency to bounce. So maybe I'll put an entry there because I'm already in the EJ on a different account. I, I don't like to take, I would rather spread the risk there. Ah, the pound is right at that L4. Do you remember that? So the yen is pushing, let's see. If that goes on, I think the pound yen is good. I'll put a entry order on that one. Last week I took a buy right at the bottom here. But I took about a three to one trade. I was happy with that, three and a half. But it could have been up a way a lot more if I would have made it a swing trade. But anyhow, it was a fast trade, so that was good. If anything, this pound yen definitely moves fast. So if you're a scalper, then I think pound yen is probably one of the faster currencies really to scalp. I forgot to mention that. I think. Oh no, I did mention it. Did, did you see the webinar last week? characteristics of the currency pairs. For scalping, I think it is probably a, a good one, I would say. So this is a two to one setup, right? Because the stop loss is underneath the 50 minute fractal, the entry is right at the breakout level, and the blue line is just an automatic two to one. Then I will check if that blue line is below the next resistance. And it is, because the next resistance or the next stop is at 53, the take profit is at 40. So I like those setups where I have a two to one before the next resistance. Why is that so? Because the next resistance on a higher time frame could be the spot that we not we cannot break. We broke this level. 
we broke this purple level, but there's no guarantee we'll break the next major level. So what I like to get is a two to one before that next resistance. Therefore, if it doesn't break, I still lock in that profit. And if you apply that, I think you should see your breakout success increase. Try it. Try to get a two to one. And if you don't have it, just skip that trade, I guess. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you can go for 1.8 to one, but it's also, I sometimes do that as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But in general, if you get a two to one before the next resistance, the statistics are, are higher. You do have an edge there while you still have a good reward to risk. So I think that that's also a useful tip. Now sometimes we do break, of course. So in that case, you might want to split, as I said, part of the trade so that maybe the if you're more of a patient trader and you think, oh, I, or you wish that you had were able to grab the pips upon the break, you can always split the trade in like, parts and aim partly for the next resistance and the other part aim for the break and continue to your target, right? Okay? Now, the, the thing I like about this level, too, is that obviously we have a lot of tops. Obviously, we have an ascending wedge. So, I think there's a high likelihood that buyers will step in here that other buyers besides me will step in there, right? But we never know. But I think it uh, makes sense to me. So those are just two ideas here on the dollar yen, pound yen, and even the euro yen, although I'm not taking it. It's kind of the same idea, in fact. Um, And the 8.86 Fibonacci idea, right, on the euro dollar. We discussed as well. The pound dollar, let's see, Darshan is asking about the pound dollar. Basically, not sure what you heard or not, uh, Darshan, but in my opinion, the 7.86 and 160 is a very key resistance. We could still push up there. Any move down before we reach 160, could be support to go to 160. That could that will be resistance probably, or there's a high likelihood of resistance. Then the question is, will we make a bull a bull flag, or will we move down quickly? If we move down quickly, and make a bear flag, more downside is likely. If we make a bull flag, then one more upside to the 886, uh, 886 fib plus top of that triangle, and then downside is likely. So those are the two main scenarios. I do think that. Upside to the 886 is a tad more likely, but you never know. The 786 will, in any case, gain respect from the market, and we'll see a stall right there. And why is that so? As I said, the currency stopped at 236, at the 382, at the 50, and at the 618. Even if it doesn't stop at the 786, we have to assume it will. No problem, Dasha. No problem. Just wanted to check what you what you saw or not. You know so. Yeah, there is news, by the way, indeed, 50 minutes from now. So that could be a bit tricky with the pound yen, by the way. Maybe I didn't think about it. Thanks for that. Hey, that's weird. Ah, I forgot. Those tools don't work. I have to get those tools working. Because normally I, they, uh, I, anyhow, I wanted to delete the pound yen idea because the news event would make it a bit r riskier for this intraday trade. Absolutely. Thanks for the reminder. I always forget news events. So <laughs> I look at it, and then I forget it. Um, but the dollar yen, I think, is different, because that's a breakout trade. I, I will put that order on after our room, because I think that is a, that makes sense. That's anyhow when we get a confirmation of a breakout. 
I think that breakout trades are a bit less riskier, uh, especially if it's not the currency, of course, that has the news event, right? Pound yen is different. First of all, it has the pound in it. Second of all, it's a pullback trade. So that that in itself, I think, is wouldn't be right. So uh, yeah, thanks, Darshan, for that. And um, let's see if we get a, a, a continuation. If we do get a deeper pullback down here, I still think it could be a good long for that upside, by the way, on the pound yen. Back to the pound dollar. So that's basically what I'm seeing is some short-term potential to move up, but resistance right around the corner, 786, 886. And those, either the 786 or 886, could see a pretty substantial down move from there. And I'll be trail stopping any shorts on the euro dollar or pound dollar from 886 using the four hour fractals. And I want to see price underneath the band and I'll use the four hour fractals right at the band to trail stop that trade to the downside. And in my opinion, you could the target for the pound dollar downside could be all the way at 144. I'll put a take profit at 144. I know it sounds ridiculous maybe, but I'll just trail stop it using the four hour fractal. Uh, so, if anyone has, well, basically I'm going to round it up right now, but we can quickly take a look at the Aussie. We didn't look at the Aussie, need in Kiwi. Time flies. One thing is for sure, though, is that, I don't know why I moved the, the line here. It was here, in fact, the resistance line. And we did break through it, but we broke with, through it through wicks. So I'm still hesitant to say that was a breakout. In any case, even if it was a breakout, 382 and the 50 resistances are, I think, at 95 and 97. At the moment, the likelihood of a move down and a bounce probably about halfway to the 382 or the 50, I think, is high. The band is already pointed up. So... But we, d we shouldn't forget that if we do reach the 382 and 50, that this could be the fourth wave finished and we can still move down for one more downside. So upside to 382 and 50, I think, and then downside. That's what I think is the path of least resistance there. The Kiwi is above the range. Not so fond of the Kiwi just at the moment where it is right now, if it maybe were to make some correction and break, then I would be interested in the upside. But I would need to see more correction than this, although we are at the bottom of, the, of this channel that I have here. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not so fan of it. Unless we maybe break the green line, if we move up to it and then break, we could probably break this bull flag and continue upside. It's a bull flag without an impulse because the impulse was a gap, but you see that? We had to move up, partially gap, but then this would look like a bull flag and a break could make sense, but until we probably break above that green line, not that interested. Either upon the, the green line break or if we maybe retrace deeper to this supply and demand zone here, for example, or this, this trend line. Yeah, that wraps it up. That wraps it up, folks. Um, but not all too, not all too keen on this Kiwi, nor the Aussie at the moment. It's just I'm more in a wait and see mode. Like, yes, I do think that the chances are now decent that we'll move up, though. And if you put a fibs on this Aussie, for example, as I had prepared here on the four-hour chart, you can see. 886 to target, so now we can fib the next swing high swing low. And if we do that, you can see we bounce off the 236 fib, which is very shallow. So um, now this could be a correction back to the 382 fib. So that's why the 382 fib, in my opinion, will be probably a high likelihood of support around 90, 180. We have a top in here. We have a supply demand zone here. Long term moving average. 
could be a good bouncing spot. So we have either a short, maybe below the band, down to the 382, or we have, if we do bounce here, maybe a breakout trade above the top, up to the 618 and 272 target. So those are the zones I'm keeping an eye on, maybe. And then a bounce off the 382. The arrows are potential trade ideas here. The 382 is at 95. And let me take a look where the targets are. The targets are at 94.60, 94.80. So. I think a move up to there seems likely now, now that we have price above that major resistance. Question is from where? All right. That's about it. Otherwise, I'm just waiting for this uh, odd to finish. Okay. So. Uh, I forgot. Do you want to answer a question for me here? Oh, we already did that, actually. Well, we'll do it one more time today. I thought we had a new question, but... So for those of you who are multitasking, um, there's a poll with a question and some answers. And your feedback would be, would be interesting for me. We got about half already voted, so it's going pretty quick. So if there's anyone still there who's, who doesn't know, there's a poll. I just want to measure your opinion. One more time. Uh, sorry, Dasha, I'm not sure what you mean with the, the last option. Last option, I'm thinking hard, but Last option. Can't figure out what you mean there. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Just a few more answers, maybe. And in the meantime, Oh, I wasn't aware of that. I got lost in my thoughts, maybe. <laughs> no, I don't remember what I was saying, so. <laughs> Alrighty. Perfect. Thank you so much for your answers. And I'll take a look at those, see uh, what the results were. And thank you for being here. I'll look forward to see you tomorrow then. We'll take a look at um, all types of trading tomorrow and uh, use our breakouts and bounces and with the trends and reversal ideas and piece them all together. If you have any preference, though, for any of these, types of trading, feel free, of course, to point out to anything that you might see or want to see. Otherwise, I'll just guide you what I think is interesting, but sometimes you might you know, wonder if, uh, is this a bounce trade? Is this a break trade? So 
feel free to uh, ask those things as well, and I'll give you my feedback on that. And um, let's see how the, the trade ideas on the euro, dollar, yen, and pound, yen pan out. Wish you all great trading in any case today. And uh, see you all tomorrow, okay? Cheers.